going on YouTube back here with another video today in today's video we're going to be doing a mod to my truck and I think this is one of my favorite mods to do to these trucks and it's often overlooked we're going to be installing a valve body in the built transmission if you don't know a valve body is pretty much a shift kit for these it'll really firm up your shifts cut some ET because the time between shifts is less and it'll also reduce the wear on your clutches and the heat your transmission produces so not only is it beneficial for times and speed and all that stuff driving around on the street it's going to feel really good it's going to hit hard and it's also going to reduce some heat so all around this is a good mod to do often overlooked and yeah so we're going to go ahead and put one in today on the lightning if you guys don't know we have a built transmission um wasn't quite happy with how it was shifting it was just too smooth for me so what i did is i contacted chris garrett at a1 and had him make me a valve body for my transmission this is going to be the race version this is for if you have a converter because a converter will naturally soften up your shifts so he accounts for that with some extra pressure in the springs and the magic the voodoo he puts into these so he accounts for the converter and this should really stiffen up our shifts so we're going to install this today super easy there's really not a whole lot to it um, all you're going to need is an inch pound torque wrench, an 8 and 10 millimeter socket. I got about 8 quarts of transmission fluid. Mercon 5 is fine. Motocraft transmission fluid. And 8 should be enough. We'll see. Um, and then we got a new transmission filter while we're at it. Now whether or not you have a stock pan on your truck or you upgraded to the 4x4 pan, that will matter on which filter you need because the pickup length, that flange there for the pickup is longer for the 4x4 pan. So I will put a link to both of them in the description and you can get one according to your needs. We have, the, we have the 4x4 pan with the drain plug. So we got the bigger filter, has the bigger pickup there. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So to start, we pulled the dipstick out. I'm not sure if you really have to do that, but I do know some people say that it helps with your fluid draining out better because the air doesn't get stuck in there and create like a vacuum. So pull the dipstick, can't hurt. And we're gonna get up underneath this thing and drain our fluid. All right, so first thing you wanna do is drain your fluid. As you can see, we have the four x four pan. So we're gonna be cheating, it's gonna be easy for us. If you don't have the four x four pan, it's still not that bad. Take out all the bolts that go around the pan, leaving the four corners. You wanna bolt in each corner. And then what you'll do is you'll take out the back two bolts and tilt the pan backwards and let the fluid drain out that way. Once all the fluid's out, then you can remove your front two bolts and just kind of let it fall straight down into your pan. It's a little messier that way, but it's really not that bad. I've done it that way before and it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. So like I said, just take out all the bolts around the pan and leave the four corners. Take out the back two corners, let your pan fall backwards a little bit, let it tilt back and let it drain that way. We are just gonna pull our bolt and let it drain. So we'll come back to you when all the fluid is out and we'll move on. All right, so we got all the fluid out, put the plug back, and now we're gonna pull all of these bolts that go around the pan. It's pretty simple, just follow them around. It's 10 millimeter. We're gonna leave the four corners and then pull those and drop it down. And we'll come back to you when that's all done. No sense in filming all that, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, as you can see, we got the pan off. Super easy, like I said. The filter is also out right there. To get the filter out, just apply some downwards pressure and twist a little bit and it should pop out. Make sure you get that orange seal out of there as well. The new filter should have a new seal. Don't leave that up in there and then push the new one up in there and have two seals. You'll cause a leak probably or something will get stuck or you have some problems. Don't do that. So get the old seal out, make sure that comes out. And now we're ready to take off the valve body, which is right here, this piece up front. If you're having trouble finding it, I mean, just literally the big thing up front. Take your old one and compare it, but it's right here. This guy right here. You see it goes around there. Take off all the 8 millimeter bolts, and it literally just comes straight down. It's pretty simple. All right, so as you can see, we got the valve body off now. The two studs are 10 millimeter. You can take off all the 8 millimeter ones first, and then the two corners will be holding the valve body up. Take those two nuts off of the studs and the valve body should come straight down. Super easy guys, really simple. So now, 
The old valve body's there, you can see. I'm gonna slide out underneath the truck and grab our new valve body. These channels are gonna go up. So facing the bottom will be the solid side. You can see how one side is solid and one has these channels. These channels are what faces up and bolts up to the transmission. So slide back under here with our new valve body. Slide up under here. The front of the truck is that way for reference. So what you'll want to do is put your valve body you basically just follow the shape of the gasket. You can see the gasket there. That the opening goes towards the front. Channels facing upwards. And it's going to slide up just like that. See? So your channel is going to face towards the front of the truck. Slide it over the studs. We're gonna put those nuts on and start putting some bolts back in the holes. All right, so we got the new valve body up there, as you can see. All the bolts are in there hand tight, not tight at all, just with your fingers. And now what you wanna do is get your inch pound torque wrench, set it to, I start off with 50 inch pounds, start in the middle and work your way to the outside. And then your final torque setting should be between 80 to 100 inch pounds is what it calls for. I'm gonna do 90, split the difference, go right in the middle, and then torque everything to 90 inch pounds, and then you're good to go. And the valve body is installed. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna put our new filter in and put the pan back on, and then fill this sucker up with some fluid. So let's get to torquing. All right, so we got the valve body all torqued down. I figured I'd touch on this real quick because it was wrong of me to assume that everyone knows how to use a torque wrench. So I figured I'd just kind of hit on that real quick. Basically, you'll wanna put your setting According to the torque you want. In this case, we did 90. You guys aren't gonna be able to see the numbers on camera. It's kinda, it's too greasy and shiny, but set your number accordingly. It's pretty easy that way. You wanna lock it and basically just tighten it until it'll click. When it clicks, that's when you know it's torque to spec. I mean, everyone should know that, but if you don't, there you go. Just figured I'd hit on that real quick. And then also make sure you clean your pan really good. Get all the gunk out of there. If you have a magnet in the bottom, clean your magnet real nice. Make sure it's nice and clean. Wipe down your gasket. Now we're gonna bolt this up. There is a torque spec for these bolts. I honestly don't remember what it is. I normally just use a quarter inch drive ratchet and just go tight, you know, tight. Um, you also you obviously don't wanna over tighten it. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that, I'm sure you could look up the torque specs or maybe I'll put them in the description, but just tighten it up. I mean, you can kind of feel when it's tight enough or too tight, just kind of develop the feel for it. But if you don't like it, I'll look it up and put the torque specs in the description, but just tighten them up. It's not that hard. Um, yeah, so we're gonna put the pan up, tighten it up and fill this sucker up with fluid. All right, so everything's bolted back up and put together. We started off with six quarts of fluid. I put six quarts in. In case you don't know, that goes in where the dipstick does. You put the funnel there and pour your fluid in there. We started with six quarts because we have the deep four x four pan, which by the way, now is a perfect time to upgrade to a four x four pan. There's no sense in putting the stock pan back on. Four x four pan holds an extra quart of fluid. And then of course you saw you have the drain plug now. So it's a lot easier next time you have to pull fluid out of there for whatever reason. But if you do put the stock pan back on, maybe start with five quarts instead of six. And what you'll do is you'll start the truck, kind of let it warm up a little bit, get it to temperature, and then you're going to run it through all the gears with your foot on the brake. Put your foot on the brake basically, put it down into reverse, hold it there for about 30 seconds, put it down into neutral, hold it there for 30 seconds, so on through all the gears. Do it several times. I normally do it four or five times, 30 seconds in each gear, back and forth, just row up and down the gears and then check your fluid. And if you don't know, you check your transmission fluid while the truck is running. Basically with it still running, get out, come over here, pull the dipstick, clean it, put it back in, pull it out and check it. And you'll want it basically, I'm gonna go over all this stuff just in case you don't know. You will want it where it says hot. You'll want it anywhere in between where it says hot there. So bring it up to temperature, do all that stuff, check your fluid and add accordingly. 
do all of this while the truck is running. You check your fluid. You can put the funnel back in, add a little more, and just keep going until it's full and where it's supposed to be. And then you're pretty much good to go. So yeah, once we get all the, the appropriate amount of fluid in there, we'll go out and do some test hits and some driving and just see how the VOB body feels. But like I said, we got six quarts in there now. We're gonna warm the truck up, row it through the gears, check the fluid, and get it to where it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and get to work on that. Let me give it a couple seconds, let the fuel pumps kind of prime, get it some fuel. Crank her up. gears like I said just put it in each gear just kind of leave it there for 30 seconds or so just to get some fluid through the body nothing too critical you just want to like I said you want to open up the different chambers let the fluid go through there just kind of run it down to each gear do that back and forth 20 to 30 seconds and each one's fine and then get out and check the fluid all right now that we rode it through some gears get out check the fluid and see where we're at let's get a towel it's a little hard to do while holding the camera and while the truck's running hopefully you guys can hear me but let's check the fluid, see where we're at. Quart and see where we're at after that. 
All right, so we put another cord in there. We're gonna let that drain down real good. May as well just run it through the gears one more time while we let it drain. And then we'll see where we're at again. Fun stuff. Now that the truck's actually warmed up, the AFRs are holding a lot more steady. I don't know if you guys will probably notice, but when it's cold and I was running it through the gears, sometimes it'll hit neutral or something and do some funky stuff. I'm not sure if that's because the IAC is not warmed up properly or the sensors need to be up to temp, but once it's up to running temperature, it's perfectly fine. So I figured I'd get some comments on that and address that before I do. But Yeah, now it's fine. It stays in the 14s. But anyways, guys. with this thing while filming and everything but you can see that we are right in the middle of the hot so that's pretty good it's not bad i might top it off with a little more just a splash but that's perfectly fine right there honestly that way if the trans does get any hotter it has room for expansion but yeah that's pretty good right there guys happy with that now that's eight quarts in the deep four by four pan so eight quarts is what you'll need for the four x four pan most likely seven with the stock pants it's one quart less but always start off with a little less because you can always add more like we did started with six and ended up at eight like i said i might go to the store get another quart maybe add a quarter of it just to kind of top it off a little more but that's perfectly fine right there that's good that's where you want to be all right so now that we got the fluid all topped off and everything like that figured I'd go for a quick little drive and just let it shift through some of the gears and show you how it shifts. I have no idea how much justice the video is going to do. Probably none. But we'll see if we can't get it to do some type of justice for you. Just so you guys can kind of see what the valve body did. I'll just let it kind of run through the gears first, second, and third. Make sure you guys check them out and get you one. You 
can get a race valve body if you have a converter. And if you don't, if it's a stock truck or bolt-ons with a stock converter, you can do the street valve body. Like I said, the race valve body, he compensates for the softness of the converter because the converter will soften your shifts. And he stiffens it up a little more to, co to compensate for that. So, but yeah, awesome, super happy with it. Like I said, big shout out to Chris Garrett and A1 Transmissions. I'll put a link in the description where you guys can go get you one for your truck and you won't regret it. It's an awesome mod. Probably one of my most recommended mods to do. I, I really love it. Really changes the whole characteristics of the truck. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you drop a thumbs up on it and leave a comment down below. Those two things really help out the videos, so make sure you guys are engaging with the videos when you watch them. As you can see, it's a pretty simple mod. Every, everything pretty much just bolts right up, and it's going to make a drastic improvement to your truck. So definitely a must-do mod to every truck, in my opinion. Even if your truck is stock, put a valve body on it. You can get the street version from A1. All the links are in the description and it'll really make a big difference and prolong the life of your transmission as well so must do mod in my opinion everything went pretty good and i'm glad um, if you're new to the channel make sure you don't forget to subscribe for more go check out all our videos that we have on the channel as well we'll see you on the next one